So often we think that the greatest basketball player of all time is Michael Jordan, or the greatest entrepreneur of all time is Elon Musk or some of these other guys, or the greatest businessman, or the greatest anything uh, are the ones that we know about. The greatest actor of all time, like right now is you know Leonardo DiCaprio, or no, it's uh, uh, who's the guy, Johnny Depp, or maybe it's, who are the multidimensional actors we talk about? Hardy. You know, Hardy, or some of these, other, we think they're the best actors in the marketplace. But I will tell you, I believe in my opinion, the, the greatest talents of all time who would have been better than Michael Jordan, who would have been better than any of the greatest actors we've ever seen, who would have been greater than any of the greatest entrepreneurs we've ever seen, are the ones who gave up at one point, and because of that one point they gave up, no one in the world knows about it. Look, right now we have around, what was the number uh, you told me earlier, Mario, on, on how many people follow our content over now? Half a on a, over half a million people follow the content on a monthly basis around the world, from about 200 different countries. And this half a million people weren't following Patrick Bay David 10 years ago. This half a million people weren't following me 13 years ago. Nobody knew who Patrick Bay David was. And a lot of times, you know, uh, the whole part of you becoming whoever you want to become in life, your reasons may be different things. Many of you who follow this content are not necessarily just in the same industry I'm a part of. You're doing a lot of different things, but the principles are similar. And so for me, when I think about my own story, I think about one story. I have a lot of them. Every single day, I remember when I decided to get into sales, every day I wanted to quit sales when I worked at Bally Total Fitness because I was terrible in sales. Listen, I was the worst sale. If you write a book, the worst salesman of all time, my face should be on the cover of it. That's how bad I was in sales. I was terrible. I couldn't sell anybody uh, when I was working at Bally's. It was my first sales job I had. And then from there, when I decided to take the leap of faith from W-2, into going and being a business owner where it's 1099, the only way you make money is based on what? You sell something, you make money. If you don't sell this thing, you don't make money. And then you go into the 1099 space. And uh, that's the day when it's scary because every day you come home, you don't sell anything, guess what? You're out of business that day. If you don't sell a policy, if you don't sell a home, if you don't sell an insurance, an annuity, a whatever it is, a membership, you, you are not in business that day. You, you're not making money that day. So it's a, there's a certain sense of, do I want to just go back or do I just want to give up and go back and do this? And there was one time, breaking point. Uh, I'll give you the exact date, the exact location, the exact feeling, pain, everything about it. It is December 31st, 2002. December 31st, 2002. And um, in California, LA, Studio City, you know, when you go to Universal Studios, at that time, we used to go to Universal Studios, we had nothing, we had no money, so we couldn't even afford to go to Vegas, my buddy and I. So we went out, and everyone's going out, let's go to a nightclub, let's go to a club. I have nothing to my name, nothing. I had a couple thousand dollars of payments that was sent out uh, 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 that didn't end up hitting the payments because B of A, my credit card was over the limit. They ended up taking all the money out of my checking account to pay the bills. I have nothing going on in my account. I have zero going on in my, I don't have money to buy gas. I don't have money to buy an In-N-Out uh, burger, double-double, but my friend and I were both 220 pound guys at that time. We go buy this In-N-Out burger, it's 1150. We go to the backside, it's an alley. You go all the way up, it's like this. We parked the car in my Ford Focus. I haven't made a payment for a couple months, two or three months. And we're in this car, and we're listening to, uh, who's Ryan Seacrest? Is it Ryan Seacrest? Yeah, Is that the, Ryan Seacrest, right? And we're listening to Ryan Seacrest for the countdown. We take the in and out we split because we had some change. We split it, he gets the half, I get the half. We're eating the in and out and I am literally in the car thinking to myself while I'm listening to the countdown with Ryan Seacrest, tears are coming down my eyes. I'm emotional and telling myself, um, is this really it? Like, is this truly it? Is this really what life is all about? So this is what life is supposed to be about? It's supposed to be this difficult? It's supposed to be so annoying? It's supposed to be this, but we don't even have any, any money to go out and celebrate New Year's? This is how it's supposed to be when your dad is in the hospital because of heart attacks, because you can't afford to help your dad out with a couple thousand dollars here and there? Is this how life is truly supposed to be? You're supposed to be miserable, stressed out about money for the rest of your life, watching all these other people having their dreams come true and deep down inside you're thinking to yourself, can I ever be like that person? Does that person have certain special God-given ability that I don't have? I am I really that terrible? Am I really that not talented and not gifted? Am I really that horrible at what I do? Is that really, really what it is? 
and this countdown's going down, and I hear 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and the countdown happens, there is no joy, nothing. There's no joy, there's no feeling of excitement, inspiration, no, no joy in the belly at all whatsoever. And that night, I made a decision and I said, this is gonna be the last year ever that I go into another year not excited, um, not being at a place where I'm excited about my year, I'm not gonna let this happen anymore. It was so much sheer frustration, anxiety, agitation, frustration, everything combined together was in me that night and for whatever reason, I couldn't even wait to go to, I, I didn't even want to go to sleep. I, I could care less about what we're going to do that. And I just wanted to get back to work the next day and start reading, working on myself, developing, selling, calling, following up, going and prospecting, talking. I just, there was a certain level of urgency. And I will tell you, I will tell you here, and a lot of my friends will tell you this as well. My eyes changed from December 31st, 2002 to January 1st, 2003, completely changed. Boom, flicker, changed, different eyes. Overnight, my eyes changed. I went to the guy that was droopy. My eyes were, you could tell when somebody doesn't really know where they're going. You look at their eyes, you're looking all over their place. Boom, clear, we're making this happen. The following year, I said, this year, for New Year's, I'm going to go to New York City. I'm going to celebrate the ball being dropped. I'm going to stay at the hotel on Manhattan, right in front of the ball. I'm going to go shopping at Saks Fifth Avenue with $5,000 of clothes. This is what I'm going to do. That's what happened the following year. The following year, I said, one of my guys, his dream was to go to Guatemala, to go out there and see Tikal, and he wanted to give all these food and Bibles, all this other stuff to him, and I'm running a financial services business at that time, and he's one of the agents that I'm mentoring. He said, I want to go to Guatemala. We went to Guatemala. And this became a tradition, and every year it was more and more and more and more excitement about what is possible that you and I can contribute to the world with the limited time that we have in the world, what you and I can do to contribute to the world, and all this goes back to 10 reasons why you should never give up. And I'm going to get right into it, specific reasons why you should never give up. And, and I hope when you're watching this message, you realize whatever point you are in your life, you're never as bad as you think you are, and you're never as great as you think you are. Believe me, you're typically right in the middle. But you have so many abilities that no one will ever find out because so often people give up, right? So let's talk about the 10 reasons why you should never give up. Number one. It's very easy to find a reason to quit. No matter what, any, anything you're going through, the easiest thing to find is to find a reason to quit. I hear so many people that say things like, you know, the other day I was thinking about if, if I should be an entrepreneur now, if I should be in the financial industry now, if I should do this business, if I should do this, and then I, I asked God for a sign, and I was going through, and I saw a poster, and it said this, and I took it as, it's time for me to quit. I watched this movie, and in the movie, this person quit, and it was a sign that meant I need to quit. No. What that means is the only things your lenses are looking for, they're looking for signs for you to quit. You've already quit. You've already quit. You've already given up. This decision's already been made here to give up because the difference in the mind is what? You look at every single thing as a what? Oh, that's why I'm going to make it. Oh, that's why I can do it. Oh, that's why great things are coming. Oh my God, this is so, these are all signs, great. So it's optimism that you're attracting to yourself because if you constantly look for reasons to quit, you're gonna find millions of reasons to quit and give up on anything you're doing. Number two, when you quit, you send a message that you never thought you could make in the first place. You know right? that's, that's the thing? When you quit, you send a message to the world that you never really thought you were gonna make in the first place. You never thought you were gonna make in the first place. You never thought you were gonna make it in the first place. So it's just something you tried, but it's, you know, I honestly didn't think that I was gonna make this, and everyone knows, everyone, your friend's family will be very nice to you. They'll be very gentle, generally. There'll always be one person that's gonna be very brutal, brutal with you. Hey, what happened with that thing? I thought you were gonna be a millionaire, huh? I thought you were gonna be an incredible entrepreneur. I thought you were gonna buy yourself a Ferrari. I thought you were gonna go out there and buy a big house. What happened? How you realize, you realize that doesn't happen with us and you bought them, these people told you whatever they told you and you believed it, boom. Your message to them is, I never really thought I was gonna make it in the first place. Three, believe it or not, some people will be glad when you give up. This is a very strange thing. Uh, it's a very difficult thing because most people don't understand why would a friend or a cousin want me to give up? Why would a friend or a cousin be glad I gave up? Well, let me explain to you why that is. You got five friends, five people you hang out with, right? Five friends all come from the same community. You went to the same place. Everybody came from a family where they saw the same drugs, same girls, same party, same alcohol, same 40s, Mickeys, 
uh, uh, whatever you guys drank, whatever 40s you did, whatever clubs you went to, whatever nightclubs you went to, whatever girls you chased, everyone was the same. Everyone was a knucklehead. You played sports, basketball, baseball. You saw the fights. You saw who got knocked out, who fought, who all the friends fight everybody. You know, everyone's stories, right? Which girl broke up with who and which girl left for the other friend and all this other stuff, right? Guys or girls. Well, everybody's kind of living an average life and everyone's making somewhere between thirty to $60,000 a year. And then one of the friends decides to go out there and become an entrepreneur. And all of a sudden, that person starts, who was a person, nobody expected that person to do anything big with their lives. Now he's making or she's making 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 thousand dollars per year, and they're con contributing all over the world. They're being, you know, recognition, all this other stuff. The other four who are still at 60, 70, 80, 100, 150 thousand, and I'm using number because that's a measuring stick. Money is purely a measuring stick. That's all there is. It has nothing to do with personality. It's a measuring stick. So the other person is still content at. 60, 70, 80, and they're, they're not really happy that this person's not making 600. You really think they're glad about this? You really think people are truly glad about this? Sometimes it's the strangest things, and some people watch this and say, Pat, that's not fair for you to think that. It's a law. You know what laws I don't fight with? This is called the law of gravity, law of reciprocity, law of attraction. There are so many laws. There's a law where there are people in your life that don't want to see you leave the comfort zone and, and all of a sudden go out there and have your dreams come true. That makes them feel like they could have done the same as well, but they didn't. And you don't necessarily make them look good. So that's why sometimes some people have a hard time when their friends and family create rumors about them. They say, why would my friend say this? Why would my cousin say this? Why would say all this other stuff? I'm about to do another video that talks about the 10 criticisms entrepreneurs normally get. People... People don't understand why that happens. It's part of the game. Number four, you'll never know what would happen if you stuck it out. Can you imagine like living life? Uh, 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 I want you to visualize this. You're 82 years old. Okay, it's your funeral. You're 82 years old. It's your funeral. And uh, uh, um, you've been in the hospital for a month. Okay, your funeral's about to come up. You know you got a month to live, doctor tells you. And you're in your bed and you have your family, friends, everybody there with you. And there are many quiet moments with yourself that I don't know what you're going to be thinking about. But I'm assuming you're going to be thinking about the moments with people you love the most, wife, kids, those thoughts that you're going to have. But I'm sure there's going to be a quiet moment as well when you're going to say, and maybe you're going to, at that time when you're dying, I'm assuming when you're dying, you're going to have a lot of thoughts about God. You know, even Chris Hitchens, who didn't believe in God, the closer he was getting to dying, he was thinking about it even more and more and more about the existence, even though he denied it and says, I still don't believe there's a God. But you're going to have those conversations. But one of the conversations that's probably going to take place is, man, did I give everything with this eight years that I had? Could I have done more? Man, could I have contributed? Could I have become a better, better father? Did I use my talents? Did I really make a difference? Did I really make an impact the way I could have? You're going to have that conversation. That's a tough one to face because it's you against you. It's not anybody else. And the challenge with that is we rarely think about that situation. Why? Because you're watching this, you're 22, you're thinking you'll never be 80. You know, you're watching this, you're 38, you think you've got plenty of time to go. But the reality is, like this, we're 80. Hands never lie. I say this all the time. If you look at your hands, you can tell someone's age by their hands. I can always say, somebody can have very nice skin here, but you look at their hands, you say, yep, he's 48. You can tell from the hands. Yep, he's 39. Yep, he's 58. This doesn't lie. This is going like this. Quickly, it's going like this. Time is flying like you wouldn't believe. Do you really want to have the life to look back and say, what would have happened if I would have given everything I had? What if I built that life? Number, number five, why well, you should never give up. The consequences of giving up, or qu of quitting, are quite a lot higher than sticking it out. A lot of times we have this pain that, man, I would rather go home and watch the game tonight. I don't really want to work today. It's Saturday. I'm not supposed to be working on Saturday. I have a meeting on Sunday. Do you really? I don't want to work on Sunday. I should be home, hanging on, watching a movie. Everybody else is watching Super Bowl. I shouldn't be out here selling, and you feel sorry that maybe you're working too hard. You know, I, I should, this is too much. You know, honestly, this life, money's really not that important. Money's really not that important. It's not. I, I, it's not that important. I'm just going to, I'm better off while going, getting a job from nine to five and just really living a regular, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to go for the whole thing. And then you don't see the consequences. But then later on, when you realize we went to school, school is expensive. You have two kids and that's very expensive. Diapers are expensive. Marriage is expensive. Weddings are expensive. Anniversaries are expensive. 
Christmas is expensive. Holidays are expensive. Birthdays are expensive. Clothes is expensive. Lifestyle is expensive. Car insurance is expensive. Mortgage is expensive. Debt is expensive. Everything is expensive. Then you realize there's a big difference if I be making 220 right now versus making $28,000 a year right now, $38,000 a year right now. There's a big difference with that. So the consequences of you giving up is by far, by far bigger than you sticking it out and actually making it happen for yourself. Six, when you quit, you set a mental precedent that you'd quit again. Quitting is a very simple habit. You do it once, you'll do it again. Quitting is a very simple habit. By the way, fighting through and winning is also a habit, just so you know that. There's a reason why they said that guy's a fighter. I don't know what's gonna happen. You just don't wanna fight that guy. He's a fighter. He, he may not be the best right, but he's a fighter. You don't, you don't give up. That, that guy's still a fighter. It's a habit as well. Giving up is absolutely a habit too. Seven, anything worthwhile takes time, sacrifice, and ever, effort. Anything worthwhile takes sacrifice, effort, and time. Anything. It takes a while. Having a nice six-pack takes a while. Sacrifice is not eating the food you want to eat. No sodas. It's water constantly. You know, work, growing your business takes sacrifice. 90%, listen, 90% of the things entrepreneurs do who win big, no one ever sees. 90% of what entrepreneurs do who win big, no one ever sees. So imagine the recognition you're never gonna get for 90% of the things you do. No one sees what time you get up, no one sees what time you go to sleep, no one sees how many books you read, no one sees how many calls you make in a day, no one sees that. But the same goes for the people that don't make it. No one sees that you're not working, no one sees that you took the whole day off, no one sees that you're sitting home watching TV. No one sees that you're watching Wheel of Fortune early in the morning. No one sees that you're not really working that hard. No one sees that. Only you know that. Only you see that. But there's a key. Time, sacrifice, and effort. There's a patience that goes with that. Eight, you're a lot closer than you think you are. I can't tell you how many times I had a person who, uh, he and I were talking, and he's on the verge of giving up. He says, I don't think this is for me. Literally, he's on the verge of giving up. And we're sitting down, we're talking all this other stuff. And then he decides to stick it out, okay, and doesn't quit. Literally, two months later, he made $32,000. He's thinking about giving up. Two months later, he makes $32,000. Every single time I thought about giving up and I stuck it out, the next month, something big happened in my career. At that time, it was a milestone. Every single time I said, I don't know if it's for me. Boom, something great. Will and when I tell you it's literally around the corner, it's literally around the corner. And you know when? It's literally around the corner right after you're about to give up. Don't ask me why it's the way it is. It's just the way it is. I don't question laws. This is laws of the land. This is not a law that a senator or, or a government or a politician makes. This is laws whether you live here, you live in Australia, you live somewhere else. These are laws. That happens. It's laws of life. Nine. The process shapes you before it rewards you. The process shapes you before it rewards you. Look, money can be lost and can be made. You can make the money and lose the money. You can have the nice house one, you can lose a nice house the next day. But who you become in the process of gaining the house and the car and the growth and the business and all this other stuff, that stays for a lifetime. You know, there's two things that no one can take away from you. What's in your belly and what you ate and what you fed your mind. No one can take that away from you. That's why when you talk to somebody who's in the military and they get out, I talk to one of my buddies who's served so many terms, it's unbelievable. When you talk to him, there's a certain level of toughness that you feel when you're around him. Like, nothing in life stresses him out because of what he's gone through when he was in the military. There's a certain level of toughness that that produces. So who you become in the process is by far more valuable than all the valuables you'll ever make. And 10, life is a lot more fun when you're in the hunt for something bigger. Life is truly a lot more fun when you're in the hunt for something bigger. It just is. I, I, think, I think this thing is, this thing, life can be very boring if it's the same thing every single day. Uh, uh, I remember being in the military, there was some level of excitement about what could happen next and there was that exhilaration of something you're doing because there was a cause, there was a hunt, you were after something and it gives you an energy that you almost cannot describe. By the way, think about, imagine when you're, when you're in a hunt in life so imagine Red Bull. What's, what's another drink people drink? Like Five Hour Energy Monster. or Monster or some of these drinks. So imagine, imagine if you drank 20 Red Bulls. Imagine if you drank 20 Monsters. I want you to think about that. Imagine you drank 20 Red Bulls, you drank 20 Monsters. Think about that. What kind of energy would you have? It's insane what kind of energy you would have. That's what happens naturally when you're in the hunt for something. That's what happens naturally 
when you're in a hunt for something. So as you go through this list, and you can find this list if you want the PDF, there should be a link on the bottom somewhere. If you go find a video on my website, Patrick Bay David, there'll be also a PDF uh, for you to find the top 10 reasons why you should never give up. Um, but this is something that I, I, every time I wanted to quit, every time I wanted to give up, this is something I kept going back. I've had this for 15 years. I kept going back to this list and every time I would say, you're about to quit, it's number seven. You're about to quit, it's three. You're about to quit, it's number two. You're about to quit, it's number eight. You're about to quit, it's number 10. Stick it out. You're about to quit, you're going through number five. Every single time, one of these steps kept me from not giving up and the next thing you know, you know, now it's a, now it's a whole different habit that we have and, and having built the, the business that we built now is a very big byproduct of uh, uh, going through these lists and reminders of never giving up. So question was asked because we have Facebook mentions going. Why don't you come and show the camera that we got a mentions going on right now while we're shooting this here. Put the camera here so they can see you. No, no, Mario, go in front of the camera. In front of the camera. In front of the camera. This is Mario, by the way. In front of the camera. Um, <laughs> Uh, 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 I talked about we're doing an episode as well that has to do with 10 criticism, 10 common criticism entrepreneurs get. And another one is the one thing uh, in life that's going to be coming out in the video. But people ask, so what should I read for 10 reasons to never give up? I will tell you again, it's 25 laws for doing the impossible. It's a book. If you have not read it, go read it. 25 laws for doing the impossible. It's a book I wrote that has to do with three, three phases you need to go through. One recreating yourself, identifying your cause, and then going and making history. And what is the mindset behind those 25 laws? And you can find this on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, ebook, all over the place. The link will be somewhere there. Go buy the book, read the book, post a review on Amazon, and private message, message me and let me know what you got out of the book on how that's going to help you out with never giving up. And this is a message that if you run a company, if you run an organization, if you have a team, this is a message that's a timeless message for many people that you may not know are going through this right now. This is a message to share with them as well. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, this video may be played on Entrepreneur Network. A lot of people may take this video. You can subscribe to the channel on YouTube, Value Tame. And if it's right here, you're watching it, click on subscription on the bottom or go on my website, patrickbaydavid.com and subscribe to our weekly newsletters. With that being said, thanks for watching.